Magnify your name. Magnify your name. Magnify your name. Sit de 
Crossing over Crossing over Crossing over O gates, and lift them up, ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, who rules over all creation with his heavenly armies. Sibele Kasata. Open up ye heavens, open, open up ye heavens, open, open up ye heavens, open, open up, open up, here comes the king. Here comes the king. Make it tatara bahasa. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Here comes the king. Sebele akosto la bahasa. And every tongue confess. Here comes the king. Here comes, here comes the king. Here comes the king. Thank you, worship team. You guys are amazing. Tammy, would you put on? Tammy, would you put on a, prof a prophetic uh, instrumental? Meke to la bahasa, sendere beshiki, makante de beshi, men sendere beshi kanto la bokosa. The Lord can save by many or by few. Jesus said, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Where they, whatever they shall bind on earth shall be bound 
in heaven or in the realm of his spirit. And whatever they shall loose on earth shall be loosed in the spirit. Father, we, we bind every scheme, plan, and device of hell arrayed against us corporately and individually as families and as individuals. Father God, we bind every scheme, plan, and device of hell arrayed against us, uh, things known and unknown, by the authority vested in the name of Jesus. As one of the servant leaders in this house, I command the principalities and powers to stand down in the name of Jesus so that the word of God might, might be loosed with freedom, with revelation knowledge, and with understanding in the name of Jesus. Appreciate that, Lord. Lord, we choose to be recipients of, in as full a measure of the, of the inheritance that's been laid up for us through the finished work of the cross of Jesus and his shed blood. We claim the full measure of that inheritance that is now accessible to us as the sons and daughters of God. We claim the fullness of that inheritance. We choose to lay hold of that which has been purchased for us by that which is, which more, which, which is more costly than gold or silver. We claim the full purchase that's, that belongs to us by virtue of the shed blood of the risen Lord Jesus. Me quito la bahasa. Metere bishiki sata. Mandolo costa. Lord, we decree that we are among those, the people of yours who gather in the earth, under which the God of peace has crushed Satan under our feet. Me keto la baka sende. Me ti koraba kasa. Men sedekisa. Mora bakasa. Me ki teliaso. While we were worshiping, I saw, I saw light in the middle of the room. And I know that light was representative of the God of glory. But I saw that he was attracting not just you and I. But that light is being seen beyond the walls of this building. It's a light that's attracting the, those that God has called to hang out with us for his eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say miracles, signs, wonders. We decree miracles, signs, and wonders of the God kind, of the holy kind, of the right kind, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that heaven's realm increases in our midst. And we pray, Lord, that as much as possible, as much as it would please you, we would lose the awareness of that which is carnal and natural and uh, pertaining to the senses to draw us away from and interfere with you. Let the cross be applied to that. Holy Spirit, we ask you to magnify the kingdom of God in our midst and that inheritance that belongs to each of us. Magnify that, God. Magnify that. Magnify that. God, I pray that tonight you'd minister to your people. Hey, regardless of what I do, I pray that your people would encounter you tonight. I pray, God, that you would minister to your people. Regardless of, the, of what I say, that your people would encounter you tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus. Meko Rabba Kasinde. Increase your presence, Lord. Fill this house with the glory of God. There's always more of you. 
There's almost always more depth in you, more height in you, more length and width in you. You can always reveal more of heaven's substance and reality. And we ask you for that. We ask you for that, Father. We ask you for that, God, our Father. Please touch our minds. Please touch our minds. Please, please release light into our minds and understanding to the eyes of our heart. We ask you for that. Lord, heaven is accessible and you've intended us to take full advantage. So we do so tonight. In the name of Jesus. two messages <laughs> one of them shorter than the other <laughs> I'm just going to submit the one to you tonight and uh, one, of them's a, one, of them, one of them needs more time so I won't do that to you tonight on Wednesday night <laughs> uh -huh. but, if, but if Sister Tammy keeps cheering me on we just might do that one <laughs> I'm just teasing. Okay, you guys all right? Just check. Did anyone here, before you came tonight, sh shoot up a desperate prayer to heaven, praying that you, that God would touch you tonight? I'm just checking. I, I just really need to, to just be really be honest. Okay, come up, Rach. Would you come up? Anybody else? You, you shot up a prayer that you would be touched tonight. Yeah, you, you ladies just stand right across there. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Meko sapa. Sebeke sakata. Subaka hasanda. Say Becky second. Pastor, would you just anoint each of these these daughters and sons of God? And the Holy Ghost is that the, the oil is just a type of the Holy Spirit, but we know this the oil in this house is anointed. We know that because we were here. So the Holy Spirit's going to confirm his anointing. Appreciate that, Father. God, thank you for that. Appreciate that. Hallelujah. You guys that are sitting, um, just stretch your, your... Thanks, Pastor Steve. You guys that are sitting, just stretch your hands. I'm just going to have you decrease something. And if, if you know, if we'll come into agreement and uh, let's really honor the Lord and let's not allow anything to distract us from this moment. 
Nothing whatsoever. Nothing. Even if President Trump is calling, put him on hold. Okay? And uh, everyone just stretch your hands toward these, and we're just going to decree something. Just say, times of refreshing. Times of refreshing. Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Now, those of you that are sitting down, I want, I want you guys that are sitting down to, to get a bead on, 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 these, on these people. And I want you to come and lay your hands. I need at least one person to come lay your hands. Uh, just one person to come lay your hands on each of these people. Just want, the, just want to, the Lord to be a lightning rod for the Lord. Yeah, one person to lay your hands on each of these people. Say it out loud, Lord Jesus. I release times of refreshing from your presence to your daughters, to your son. Lord Jesus. I am your lightning rod, and I release times of refreshing right into your daughter, right into your son, in the name of Jesus. Flow through me, Holy Spirit, and release times of refreshing into your son, into your daughters. More than enough, Lord. M new wine, joy, peace, holy presence power more than enough lord saturate their entire spirit their entire heart their entire soul and every cell of their physical body times of refreshing from the presence of jesus more lord we decree more 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 lord touch their dna Lord, touch their spiritual DNA, touch their solical DNA, or touch their physical DNA. Times of refreshing, never the same again, never the same again, never the same again. We cancel every assignment of oppression, depression, discouragement. We cancel every assignment of confusion, perplexity, disappointment. Be broken! Broken off of God's people. Broken in Jesus' name. Broken in Jesus' name. And we speak recovery, restoration, restitution in the name of Jesus. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. Heal the spirit. Heal the heart. Heal the mind. Heal the emotions. Heal the imagination. Heal, Lord. Heal. Heal. Recover. Restore, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name. Me kola pasete kesikite. Ma kanto la pahasekete. Men sedele kishakata. Mante kisikishaka. Mahasa. Now, Father, let that. That, that presence of your anointing, Lord, that hovers over your people, let it go into them now. You guys that are receiving prayer, just say, I receive, Lord. That's all you need to say. Give him permission. Father, let that glory go into them. Let that glory go into them. Infuse them with strength and power. Infuse their entire spirit. Infuse and quicken their entire soul. Infuse and quicken their entire physical body in the name of Jesus. Heal, Lord. Infuse. Holy infusion. Holy infusion. Holy infusion. Holy infusion of the God kind. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's all give God thanks. Lord, thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, God. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. 
Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated if you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mekota Bahasa. Mentekisa. Mako Sabaka Sunday. Meseketo Boko San. Look at the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to teach long tonight. <laughs> right, Brother Larry? <laughs> I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing you. Thank you, guys. Bless you, guys. I'm, I'm going to try not to be long. John, chapter 14. You know, I don't have this written out. And uh, and this is uh, fresh. So I'm just going to unpack what I can. Is that okay? I hope it comes out in English. Amen. I know you do. Hallelujah. Beginning at verse 16 in John chapter 14, Rachel is going to read... Uh, through, she's going to read verses, uh, John 14, verses 16 and 17. John 14, verses 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, isn't that awesome? If I could put a title on tonight's message, it would be, What did we receive when the Holy Spirit came? So we're just going to discuss that just a little bit. What did we receive when the Holy Spirit came? Now, you and I know that it's been said that the Holy Spirit is the, he's a member of the Godhead. He's been referred to as being the third person of the Godhead. Remember that old song we used to sing? God in three persons. Remember we used to sing that? Remember we sing that? God in three persons. But God is, but, but how many of you remember the verse in the, in the old uh, t covenant? Uh, in Exodus, I believe it says, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. So the Godhead, the Trinity, so to speak, the Bible doesn't actually use the word Trinity, but it does use the word Godhead. It's a mystery. Some have described the Godhead as being like water, which can take on the form of ice or steam. Right? It's still the same nature. That's the same nature. But we're talking about the third person of the Godhead. That doesn't mean he's less than the Father or the Son. Right. Holy Spirit, he is God. He is as much God as is Jesus. And Jesus is as much God, come on, as is the Father. He is the God man. Jesus is fully God and fully man, not half God and half man. He is fully God, fully man. 
Isaiah tells us that a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called e Emmanuel, which means, translate it, God, God's with us. But in the Hebrew, the name Emmanuel means in man dwelleth God. Hmm? And that was Jesus. In man dwelleth God. Right? But we're still talking about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Now, here's... Just listen to this translation. You don't have to turn there, Tammy. Just stay with the one that you and Rachel are, are using. He says, and I will ask the Father, this is Jesus speaking, this, and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby to be with you. How long? Forever. Did you know when you came to church tonight, he came with you? Did you notice, you, did you know that he was with us even before he manifested his presence? He is with us even when we felt nothing. He is in us. All right, somebody say, stir up the gift of God. Did you know? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is a gift. Yes. <laughs> Verse 17 says, The Spirit of truth, come on, whom the world cannot receive. You know, I have read from a trustworthy source in the past, and they made this statement about the Holy Spirit. You know, he is the Spirit of truth, and that is one of the attributes that Satan cannot counterfeit is truth. He can counterfeit love, but he cannot counterfeit truth. Jesus said concerning Satan, uh, he, he, the, the truth is not in him. Jesus said concerning Satan, he's a thief, he's a murderer, and he is a liar. You know, uh, Tammy and I had a horrible experience a couple of days ago. It was absolutely horrible. Don't say anything, honey. <laughs> it was horrible. About a couple of weeks ago, I had um, been working on my daughter Mariana's car, did a brake job for her. And at one point, I had the garage door open and the back door open because it was warm in the garage and I needed access to my tools. So I opened the garage door and the, the back door of the garage so that the wind could blow through, so it'd be cooler, right? I wasn't working in the garage, but it was still hot. And so uh, Tammy walks by and she says, Honey, why is that door open? You're going to let something in here, a mouse or, or something. Somebody say, Husbands, listen to your wives. <laughs> <laughs> because a couple of, a couple of days ago, um, I didn't even tell Tammy the first time I saw it, but, but there was a creature that got into our house. It was not a snake, but, but, snakes, but snakes eat these, these guys. It was not a mouse. It was a rat. Oh, my God. And those things are evil. Yeah. They are demonic. Long tails. <laughs> they are demonic. When, when they come, they act as if, when they're in your house, they act like it's their house. And, and I mean, this was hideous to see those, one of those things about that, about that long. Now, the tail was about that long. The body was about that long. Oh my God, it was, it was horrible. So I, I happened to be talking to a brother uh, from, you know, some of you guys know uh, Pastor Ron from California. Him and I were talking, you know, 
And, uh, Monday, Monday. and so, and then I'm on the phone with him and I see it again. Oh my God. That's the second time I saw it. I didn't even tell Tammy the first time I saw it because I didn't want her to freak out, you know? And so I didn't tell her. <laughs> So I went down to the hardware store, Pastor Steve, and I got three rat traps. I'm sorry? It was in the house. It got in the house. Yeah. And see, a day or so. Uh, uh, yeah, Tammy, we had saw some droppings on the counter. So to make a long story short, oh, my God, I set three traps. Well, actually, Tammy started going to the the one of the spare bedrooms and so we saw it going in there and i <laughs> slid one of the traps in there and we took a couple of towels to 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 to, to box it in and just leave it in there with the trap and so i accidentally we're in the bedroom we're about to relax and i accidentally using my phone because uh, we use our phone for to chromecast videos on TV, and I accidentally turned on the TV that was in the living room. So I got up to go turn it off. Oh, no. And I walked into the living room, the TV's on, and I seen, I saw this guy go whoo, right under the couch. I thought, oh my God. <laughs> same one. And so, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. So, so what I did, I, I picked up those towels because I assumed it made its way out. And then I took the trap and I relocated over by the couch. And so the next day, and I prayed all night, Lord. Don't let it come under my door. <laughs> the, Lord, let the angels cause that rat to guide it to one of those traps. So Tammy got up early the next day. <laughs> oh, just thinking about it makes me go, ooh. Okay. So when I got up the next day before him, because I didn't know he was up half the night over this thing, and and he didn't tell me that it, he saw it after we had shoved the he had shoved the towels, and he shoved them really good. So that morning I get up and I see the towels, the beach towels on one of the counters. I thought, oh thank God he must have got up in the middle. Of, Will must have got up in the middle of the night and checked the trap, and the thing's gone, right? So I thought, well, then I saw the trap that I think he put in the bedroom. I saw it next to where it originally was in the kitchen. I thought, okay, let me go check the one in the living room. That was still there. I go, oh, no. Oh, no. And I tipped over and looked at the one, the other one. And I just kind of started to go over there. And all I saw was this long tail thing. Ugh, and he was still sleeping. I'm not touching anything. I I went and woke him up, and I said, and it, we get. It, oh. <laughs> well, then I go to take those towels to wash them. No. There was big holes. That thing chewed its way out of the bedroom that it was in. It chewed like this thick beach towel, chewed holes in it to get back under the door to escape. Wow, that was bad. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, peanut butter. Peanut butter. And they have these, they have these, um, they have these, these black ones at Ace, and you almost set them like, you know those clips that you use for like potato chip bag or something like that? It's like one of those, but it's larger. And um, it opened up, you know, you push it down and you put, put the peanut butter inside. And it clicks and it sets. So it was really easy to set. And so I got a cup. I got. Yeah. And I think with the, with the field, What's that? The dog place now. That wow. Big field. Wow. Good gracious. It was the grossest thing. I, I, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, so, I, so I went to Google. I looked, up, I looked at rat pictures on Google after Edward. Boy, they come in all shapes and sizes. They can get really big. I'm telling you, grossest thing ever. Those things are, those things are, there got to be demonic. There's got to be rats and, there's got to be rats in hell. There's got to be rats in hell. 
but, but, but um, afterward, though, you know, I got to thinking how that, um, it's amazing. I, got, I, I looked up the word rat just to see what some of the synonyms were. And, uh, and uh, let me just um, show you this really quick. And I'm, uh, we're going to be done about 8.30. I'm not going to keep you long. Um, but I just want you to hear some. Here's a synonyms for rat. Now, this is amazing. Now, I'm just saying. I'm just reading this, okay? A uh, rat. Here's a person regarded as despicable, especially a man, especially a man who has been deceitful or disloyal. Now, here's some, here's some synonyms for rat. Because I was, I mean, this thing so jarred me. It put me, it, it caused me to go to God about it. And so here's some of the synonyms for rat. A scoundrel, a wretch, a rogue, a beast, a pig, a swine, a creep, a louse, a snake in the grass, a bum, a lowlife, a scumbag, a heel, <laughs> a heel, skunk, dog, weasel. And, and that's just a few of the synonyms for the word rat. And I understand why. That's exactly what they are. <laughs> but here's what I thought. Here's what I thought. Uh, you know, here's what I felt. I felt like, you know, how many know that something's happening in the body of Christ? You've been hearing the news and Facebook and something's happening in the body of Christ. But here's, here's the thought that came to me. Rats that have found themselves in the body of Christ, rats that have, that have uh, stealthily found a place in the body of Christ are going to be exposed, entrapped, and severely judged. I was so glad that God judged that rat in our house. I'm telling, oh, I've been thanking God for the last two days. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, God is going to judge the dirty rats. Whew. I thought, man, there's got to be an easier way to receive a prophetic word. <laughs> right? But God is judging those dirty rats in the house of God. This is, oh my God, this is time to just, it's just time to just come into agreement with Jesus. Oh my Lord, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how, how that it impacted me. I mean, my God, I can't tell you how much that impacted me. That was terrible. And, uh, and I believe to God it's just that terrible when his people are being assaulted, assaulted by demonic things. You know, God does not like it. And, uh, and God, and, I, and I'm claiming that judgment, that if there's any rats that are trying to weasel into your home, into your life, come on, and, 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 uh, among your children, come on, any rats that are trying to get in to, 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 to claim what belongs to you, may they be smitten, trapped, and judged in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, it's, it's, that's what time it is now. In the body of Christ, we're living, we are in the last days. I mean, we, we are now where the powers of hell are unscrupulous. I mean, I mean, you know, they have no, I mean, they don't care how they bring against the people of God now. Does that make sense? And so, and God wants to judge them, expose them, and judge, and judge them. Somebody say, Jesus, expose every dirty rat. In Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. So I don't know how we went over there from talking about the Holy Ghost, but. 
we got time for a few. We got time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. Yes. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly. That's exactly right. Isn't that amazing? Terrible. I mean, God. I think. I think sometimes we can lose the, our edge, on the on of awareness of how, how wicked. The adversary is. You know, that's exactly right. Go ahead, Dave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Left the door open. Yeah. 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 So, so listen to the Holy Spirit. So, we, so I'm learning to listen. That's, that was the reason for that story, Jim. I'm learning to listen to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> One brother said, the Lord has given me two Holy Spirits to keep me in line and on track. The Holy Spirit and my wife, right? Now, I sense God in that. I mean, I sense that the, the, this is a, a warning uh, uh, from the Lord. I, I feel it's a warning. Man, it shook me. Oh, I can't tell you how detestable. I didn't even look at him. I didn't even take a picture of him. I didn't put him on Facebook. <laughs> I wasn't going to give him any glory. We just disposed of him. Yes. And, and that day's coming. That day's coming, Rach. I am convinced that that day is coming. So we've got a few more minutes left. Uh, let's drop down to verse 26, John 14, verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Amen. Now listen to this translation. But the Helper, Comforter, Advocate, Intercessor, Counselor, Strengthener, stand by. The Holy Spirit. Oh, that's all right. Must be important, Debbie. It might be a call from the White House. <clears throat> but the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, stand by. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me, and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things. And he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Uh, you guys are aware that the Holy Spirit, he doesn't just help us in things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Although he does. He does not just help us in things pertaining to the church. Although he does. But I've heard Bill testify in the men's meetings and I've had heard Dave testify how that God has helped them in practical things. Yes. Come on. He'll help us do practical things, fix things around the house, find things. That's right. I can't tell you how many times we've misplaced something and we pray the prayer, prayer of agreement and go right to it. Have you guys did that? Yeah. It's amazing because he's with us in our whole life, not just in our life as it pertains to Seeking the kingdom of God. Matter of fact, he can, he can, he's got the key to the heart of our spouses. He's got the key to the heart of our children. He's got the key to the heart of your boss. He's got the key to the, to the heart of your employees. Come on, somebody. He will teach us all things. And he will also bring all things to our remembrance, whatever he has taught us. See, Jesus, for three and a half years, he spoke to the disciples. But you know, Holy Spirit was there. And he, after Jesus said it, it was Holy Spirit who brought the things that they'd been taught back to remember so that they could write them down for us. Amen? Amen? Got a few.
few more minutes. Let's go to uh, chapter 15, verse 26. Chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Isn't that amazing? He is with us. Always, never to leave us nor to forsake us. He's with us. Even when it feels, looks, and sounds like we're, we're, we're on our own. He is with us. He's the greatest gift that we've been given by the Father besides Jesus. Now we're just skating through a few things here. Um, Rach, would you go to chapter 16 and begin to read at verse 5, 6, and 7, and 8. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Keep going. Keep going. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. So do we ever need the Holy Spirit? I saw Smith Wigglesworth, maybe it was his granddaughter, was on Sid Roth's show. And she has a ministry. And when she would pray for believers, that hadn't that had already been baptized with the Holy Spirit. What she would pray for is that God would activate their baptism afresh. She would pray that God would activate the baptism of the Holy Spirit that they had already had. You know how sometimes believers, even spirit filled believers would, would grow cold? That's a good prayer right there. Just, just said. I say, Lord, activate the baptism of the Holy Spirit in me that I've already had. Activate that, Lord. And I, to to be frank and honest with you, I believe we need more. I believe we need fresh impartation from heaven. From God's heart every day. How, how, how else can we have continuous joy and peace? How can we have the continuous assurance and confidence that we are in right standing with God? God is not offended whenever we come and ask for more. He doesn't, God does not have a poverty mentality. And you'll never hear God say, what a, you want more already? What'd you do with the, what I just gave you yesterday? <laughs> now, heaven, uh, the resources of heaven, you, that's right. They, that's right. They are infinite, endless. God, come on. And God is not offended when we're dependent upon him. It's okay to to tell our Father on a daily basis that we need Him. You guys all right? We're going to come in for a landing soon. I'm going to read this translation. But now I am going to Him who sent me. Jesus is talking. And none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow 
has filled your hearts and taken complete possession of them. But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you to be in close fellowship with you. See, at that time, he was with them. But after Jesus ascended, and after they were born again, he came into them. We got a whole lot more than we, than we sometimes make mention of when we receive the Holy Spirit. I mean, we got a whole lot more than we, than we sometimes lay, lay claim to. He says, and when he comes, he will convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need for a Savior and about righteousness and about judgment, about sin and the true nature of it because they do not believe in me and my message about righteousness, personal integrity, and godly character because I'm going to my Father and you will no longer see me. Amen? I was, when I was talking to Ron the other day, I was, uh, we were talking a little bit about, you know, he shared and I shared. And, uh, and, you know, sometimes God is, you know, God's always teaching us. But what happens is, is, if, he, uh, is as if he brings you to this point where he takes the, the different parts of the things that he's been teaching you and he forms a big picture out of them. And uh, one of the things I've noticed over the season since we've been here is the ebb and flow of Konania in our church family. And I shared a bit of this Sunday, but, but I've noticed that there has been times in my life where after our church service, that evening Sunday service, uh, my heart would be just broken longing for the, the uh, fellowship of my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I, I say it this way, I would miss my bones. And, uh, and, and what the Lord began to show me, what I really was talking about was Konania. And then the Lord began to remind me how many meetings I've been to, even conferences, uh, large churches, popular churches, uh, wonderful places where it was great, you know, and there was a sense of God's presence and good teaching and anointing, but the sense of kononia, the sense of belonging and knowing that you're valued and knowing that you matter and knowing that you're significant, you're significant, that was, has been missing in so many places. And that's still missing in a lot of churches today, not, not because they don't want it, but, but because they don't know. It belongs to us. And so when the first century church received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what came along with that was a sense of belonging to not only the Lord, but to each other. You know, before the baptism of the Holy Spirit came, they were saying, they're talking about who is the greatest. You know? Peter probably said, I walked on water. John probably said, well, hey, I leaned on his bosom. <laughs> right? And they were talking about who was the greatest. But after that, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. They began to honor one another. They began to prefer one another. They began to take such as they had. Come on. As a matter of fact, in the first century church, they said, uh, everyone's, uh, you know, they weren't cleaving to their own stuff. But they took what they had and laid it at the apostles' feet for distribution. That was the church in its babyhood stage, okay? And that we're 2,000. The church is 2,000 years old, so we should be a little bit more mature. But we see the heart of the first century church. They took what they had, such as they had, and gave to others. The scripture says in that, in that church, there was nobody in need. Why? Because Konania came. The culture of heaven had overtaken the people of God. That that that
comes with the true baptism of the Holy Spirit. Power comes so that the gifts of the Spirit so